Welcome to video number three on highly recommended plugins for the use of Obsidian to create your personalized learning system. So if you have not watched video one and two, please go back to that first because video one talks about how to get started with using Obsidian for not just note taking, but the ways to improve your learning. And also video number two talks about how to organize your notes. So in this video, we are going to talk about the topic on plugins. So what are plugins? Plugins are basically little add-ons that you could put into Obsidian to improve the functionality and its use of the note-taking system. And in Obsidian, there are two different sections of plugins. One is called the core plugins, which are by default there. You can turn on and turn off them. and Community plugins. Now, community plugins are where it gets really fascinating and a lot of people are contributing to this space on improving the use of Obsidian. If I ever get to meet some of these people who created plugins, I want to shake their hand because they have really improved its functionality and the contribution from people trying to improve this is fascinating to me. So. Let's dive in first to the core plugins. All you have to do is go into the settings. And when you are in the settings, you would go into this that says uh, on the options, core plugins, and you see a whole array list of different plugins in there. Uh, so some things that I would recommend that you turn on uh, like file, ex file explorer so you're able to search through your files on the left panel i recommend that to be on search of course uh, quick switcher as well if you want to use some kind of hotkey now here are some really vital ones like graph view which we will talk about in the next video but turn that on and we will be able to use that for video number four backlinks as well so in the previous videos we talked about how creating bi-directional links in Obsidian is such a key feature that you get to see what nodes are linked to another. You want to turn that on, including outgoing links. Tag panels, so the use of a flexible way to kind of link your notes with higher order of linking. So for example, if you're taking uh, lots of notes from say an ebook reader, you can call that e-readings and you could tag that using a hash and e-readings. So you want to be able to search for those kind of groupings that way. You want to turn that on. Page preview. In video one, we talk about the use of markdown language. And when you are using markdown language, you could see how it actually looks like in a more beautified way. You want to turn that on. And there's a short key of um, command E for you to be able to see that. I don't use daily notes, uh, so I won't turn that on, but if you do, you can. Templates, uh, if you find yourself repeating certain things very often, you could create that. And once you turn that on, you turn on option, you can see um, what folder it goes to so that the templates exist in a particular folder. And then um, what else we've got? Note Composer. Uh, well, I've turned that on, but you know, it's this is more for like joining or, or splitting notes. It's not that cr critical. I will turn on command palette on just as a as a way to use the short key that if you're on a Mac, it will be command P or Windows control P that you could start to execute some of the community plugins much easier later on. Uh, others that I found helpful, start. So if some notes are really, really important and you want them to exist, in a special place, you could star them uh, and then you could search them much easier that way. Now, also because I use a lot of, uh, I do a lot of writing in here, I like to see this on the status bar at the bottom, what's the word count. This gives me a quick snapshot that way, you could turn that on. And if you are taking audio notes, you could turn that on. There's a feature where you could record uh, audio inputs that way, whether you are just speaking out or maybe it's some music ideas, you could turn that on um, file recovery now this one is not so much as like a what you get from dropbox we get a 30-day uh, history but 
you know, you get to see snapshots in a manual way and copy them if you want. The last two plugins are not available if you are not a paid subscriber. Now, all the features works very well when you don't pay, but if you want to publish your Obsidian notes and share with a wider community, um, that could be uh, something that you, you turn on and synchronizing your files across uh, different uh, devices as well uh, sync with primarily iCloud and it doesn't sync so well with say Dropbox. I heard from someone they tried to sync with Dropbox and things went missing that way so maybe this is something of a later update that might happen Obsidian I don't know but for now uh, iCloud seems to be the one that syncs pretty well if you want to translate to a mobile device so that's the stuff for core plugins now strap on your seats because this is where it's going to get interesting about community plugins and i've listed down the stuff that i recommend for community plugins in this video below i do want to say that before you start when you go into the settings and click community plugins you do have to click off on the safe mode now this is just a, a, a net, a safety net to make sure that you understand that these are plugins coming from people outside of Obsidian on the wider community of people who are contributing to them. So here are the plugins, the community plugins that I highly recommend when it comes specifically for improving your personalized learning system, your PLS. So there are many hundreds of plugins that you could be playing around with and i've gone down that rabbit hole but specifically to help improve your learning your personalized learning these are the plugins that i recommend first recent files second sliding panes third pdf highlights fourth kindle highlights fifth kanban view six find and replace in selection seven focus mode eight taskbone ocr and finally number nine data view now in case you're wondering as we go into my vault in obsidian you wonder how come the themes doesn't look quite like yours uh, that's because you get to design the themes that you would prefer all you have to do is go to settings and when you're in settings go to appearance and in appearance, you get to choose, of course, uh, light mode or dark mode. I'm using a dark mode. And then the themes, all you have to do is click on manage. And when you're in there, you get to see all kinds of themes. The theme that I'm using is by Nick Milo. And if I recall correctly, seems to be in collaboration with Celia May, who's also has her own theme. But LYT mode is the mode that I'm using currently. And um, this is by Nick Milo, Linking Your Thinking. I like it mainly because of its color and particularly it highlights which note I'm looking at uh, if I have an array of different notes open in my sliding panes, which we would get to. Again, you can play around with that. Other modes like um, minimal mode or, or uh, primary modes, I like them, but there's uh, <laughs> so much to go through. So you could play around and see which one fits your um, liking okay so let's look at the first one on recent files now this is a small feature all it does is creates a little section of all your recent files i found this much later in use of obsidian and i like it because sometimes as i'm going through the rabbit hole of all my different notes i just want to see okay what was that recent note that i wrote about this and then i could just retrieve that right so go to community plugins go to browse and when you browse, you could type that in recent files. And for me, mine's install. Once you click install and they will ask you to enable, just make sure that you enable to see that is there. And that's it. It will be installed for you that way. So once you're back in your vault, you see a little icon here that says recent files. And then it would give you a whole list of the stuff that you have been working on. That's it. Next one on sliding plane, panes, rather sliding panes. This plugin, again, you do the same thing, sliding 
Oops, sliding panes. It's by Andy. Thank you, Andy. And what it does is it creates a mode where you could slide your nodes as if you're flicking through them. I really enjoy using this. And let me go back to the vault. You can see I have a few open. All you have to do, whether you're on a trackpad, and in this case, I'm using a mouse, I'm sliding left to right, and I'm able to just scroll through all of these notes this way. Really handy. And you can see uh, it appears that the headers, uh, the titles of notes are aligned this way. And in this particular uh, LYT theme, Whenever I'm viewing a particular note, it sort of highlights that little bar. It's a cool feature that I like. The next third and fourth are very powerful plugins in my view. So for PDF highlights, what is really useful is that if you're reading a lot of stuff on PDFs, on like peer review journal articles, or even uh, ebook readings that you highlight there, when you bring it into, when you copy that into Obsidian, you could actually use this PDF highlight to extract its highlights. Now, granted, it seems sometimes when it's extracting the words are, are not spaced out. Uh, sometimes it seems to happen for me. I'm not sure if that happens for you, but I think it's a really powerful feature that you could add, immediately extract down into the text in your note in Obsidian. So that's really useful. So that's a PDF highlight community plugin. The second one is the Kindle highlight. So if you're reading books on Kindle, you could link your Obsidian using this particular plugin to link to your Kindle account so that it imports your notes from, kin from Kindle into Obsidian. So one example you could see here, um, let's say this book by uh, Simon Barrett Cohen on Pattern Seekers, right? Really like this book. And you can see all my notes highlights are imported in here to give me at one glance all the things that I have highlighted. So this is useful when I want to organize my notes. I want to go through them and see if those ideas link to other stuff that I have thought about. So in this case, this would link to um, aut uh, the autism spectrum and innovation. Uh, and that, that may help me to kind of link with my prior notes. So the fifth plugin is Kanban. Now, if you use other project management software is like, let's say Trello, you understand how a Kanban look like. It's basically like a board with a list and cards that you can create and you can imitate that in Obsidian. And what is really useful, I find, is a Kanban view helps you just organize stuff if you want to use that. So for example, for uh, my weekly newsletter publication, I use this to, to just have three simple boards things that I'm thinking about, what's coming next. And for stuff that I'm planning, I would go in there. That's a very simple view, or you can even use it for uh, wider projects that you're doing in relations to your work. If that's relevant to you, you could use that too. Number six, find and replace in selection plugin. This is, again, another useful plugin. Let's say if you have one note that's really busy, and you want to search within the note, not the entire vault, search and replace, find search and replace is helpful that way. Or if you have a, let's say a person's name that you've been spelling wrongly, all you have to do is click on that. So within a note, you know, um, let's say within a note here, you click on that and I've set it up as a command shift find. And instead of finding here, in this particular general search here, here allows you to, to find and maybe even replace if you need to within that note. So that's find and replace in selection. Number seven is focus mode. Focus mode is really useful, especially you could see how busy Obsidian can get and even messy when you're linking and you're thinking about other kinds of notes there. The focus mode is really helpful. All you have to do is hit command P type focus and you could toggle to focus mode or super focus mode where it's just only the active pane. So in this case will be this particular note. And if I click on that, it will close everything else in there for me. And I can just focus on this particular note. Number eight, Taskbone OCR. 
Now, what this does is if you are watching video content and there are some really interesting slides, say the presenter has made and you want to grab those words, you can use that to first and foremost screen grab that by doing a screenshot either on your mobile device or on your laptops on your personal computers. And then when you move it in, you can execute Taskbar and OCR to grab the text that you see on the screen. Now, as uh, at this time of recording in February 2022, if you're using like an iPhone, a, a more recent iPhone, it already has that feature when you're taking pictures, you could select that from the photos and uh, be able to grab the text from that. But if you're not using that, this is one way you could do it within Obsidian. Finally, I've left, I've left this one to the last recommendation of the community plugins. It's Data View. Data View is so powerful. It gets a bit complicated, but it's worth just pressing through and just learning this line of code. Uh, and I'll give you links below to, to where you can um, mimic how you could use it. So what it does is it, it is able to consolidate the parameters that you set within the, the code to drag in all the nodes that you're looking for. So let me give you some examples. So let's just say here for my other blog site that I write on full circles, I want to see the stuff that uh, either I'm still just beginning to do it. I call this seedlings or stuff that I've written halfway. I've not yet completed and stuff that I've grown means things that are completed. All you have to do is write these texts in here is this funny uh, little dashes on top and then data view and then list right from and then the hashtag in this case i call them hashtag full circle slash seedling sort file dot by modified time or end time m time and then the description and then once you have that and i've mimicked the same for budding and for grown and then if I click on preview on this button here or a short key of command E, it gives me all of the notes that way. And this is really useful when you're trying to organize or just go through your notes. And, you know, uh, some people call this uh, maps of content. I call this nerve centers in, in the way that I work. Uh, nerve centers are very similar to maps of content, but it's the way that I organize stuff, right? So maybe I'm building up a client's resource list. So whenever I have a tag that says client resource, uh, it would go into here. Uh, it could be my inbox or music demos that I'm working on, writing dates uh, by dates that I'm organizing them as well. So let's have a look in the writing notes. So writing by dates, I've created a table form as well. You could do this by having a different uh, uh, sort of parameters, just listing them as tables. Again, you could copy some of the, the codes that you could write, the syntax rather, to label them and they will give you the notes of the dates of the modified time too. Really powerful. So there you have it. These are the nine recommended plugins for improving your personalized learning system. Now, is this the be all and all? I don't think so. There are really so many more plugins uh, that you could play around with. And if you have found any other plugins that are helpful for your use of Obsidian, please let us know in the comments below. If this is something that interests you, please subscribe to this channel so that we know uh, what you think about them. Tell us them in the comments section too. Thank you for sticking around because in the next video, this is my favorite part, the graphs view on how you could use them beyond just the beautiful look of seeing all your nodes within a neural network. So stay tuned.